So, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, good evening to everybody. So, we have been studying uh, many of the important, uh, you see, classes uh, from the Bible. So, what does the Bible say about God's plan? How to study the Bible? So, we have clearly understood many of the things. So, today, we are going to see a concept uh, in the type and anti-type. See, while studying about uh, uh, how to study the Bible, you see, uh, we have studied the uh, different methods of how to understand the Bible. In that one, we have seen uh, one of the point was type and anti-type. That means all the things which are mentioned in the Old Testament has got its reflection and the reality in the New Testament. So we have seen uh, uh, this one. Uh, you see, and today, to understand this one much better, we are going to see an example from the Old Testament. So let us see how the Old Testament reflects the New Testament. So let us read Colossians 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Colossians 16 chapter, sorry, 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Uh, brother uh, Stephen, can you read? Yes, good evening, brother. <clears throat> Colossians 2. 16, 17. Yeah. Therefore, let no one judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a feast, a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the body that casts it belongs to Christ. Very good. So here you see, uh, it says, see, all the things uh, uh, in the law about the uh, observing of the days and sabbaths. He says, it is a shadow of good things to come. But the body, the real thing is about Christ. So, all the things written in the Old Testament is written for our admonition and our comfort. You see, so we may be strong in hope and faith. Read Romans 15.4. Romans 15.4. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Romans 15 4? Okay, Romans 15 4. Oh. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scripture and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Very good. So, all things written in the Old Testament of our time is written for our learning. Therefore, we got uh, one or the other lesson in each and everything that is mentioned in the Old Testament. So today, we are going to see a story that is mentioned about uh, Naaman in the Old Testament. We all would have heard this uh, story since childhood. It is given to us in 2 Kings 5th chapter, where Naaman was one of the, you see, uh, main army general among uh, Syrian army. And because of him, the Syrian army had won so many wars. But unfortunately, you see, he was a, a man of valor and might. But unfortunately, what has happened that he was infected with leprosy. And that had completely diminished, you see, his life. So let us read 1 Kings 5.1. 1 Kings 5.1. Uh, Abhishek Buddha, can you read 1 Kings 5.1? Okay, I'll read. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So because of his leprosy, you see, uh, he could not, uh, you see, live a comfortable life because we know very well that leprosy during those days was a contagious disease and those who had leprosy were not allowed to live in the society. They had to be very far from their family members and they were isolated. You see, they had to suffer a lot of things. And we all know, see, leprosy, you see, it actually deforms uh, one's body. Once it attaches... Uh, comes to somebody who's infected, you see, he slowly eats up his body, bones, muscles, everything, and they're totally deformed. And 
wherever the leprosy is infected they actually lose their sense even if you prick it with a you see a sharp needle also they won't have any sense at all and uh, even if you pour hot water also nothing happens to them so similarly was a condition of uh, naman who was a army general so like this only once uh, what had happened was that he had attacked uh, israel and when he went to attack israel that time he had taken a small girl a captivity to syria and that girl observes the condition of naman's <laughs> leprosy and because of which how his family was completely disturbed you see uh, let us read second kings 52 second kings 52 uh, ganesh brother peter brother can you read okay i will and the syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of israel a little maid and she waited on naman's wife very good brother see here it says uh, when uh, he had gone to attack israel he brought a captive from israel a little maid and she waited upon naman's wife and she saw a distressful condition and uh, she witnessed uh, about uh, her god to naman's wife you see uh, read second kings 53 second kings uh, 53 uh saiju brother can you read second kings 53 he said to her you said if only my master would see the prophet who is in samaria he would cure him of his leprosy see she told if a master could somehow go to samaria our israel you see there is a prophet there and he would heal him of his leprosy just imagine when is the girl little girl witnessing she is witnessing when you see she was in the enemy's land and that to his enemy she is telling good about her god that if he goes to israel a god would heal him imagine dear brethren would anybody do that one imagine if he or somebody else uh, are taken captivity to pakistan or any of any neighboring countries will we witness about our god we will feel oh it is god curse upon him god has punished him because he has brought god's people captivity let him suffer but nisha that one this little child taught good uh, about uh, you see naman and as uh, our wife told uh, this things to naman naman revived some hope at least uh, something will happen and he might be get cured of a leprosy so immediately what does naman do naman goes and tells this one to his king and king is very much pleased and king gives a recommendation letter with lot of gifts uh, to the king of israel and sends him to israel let us read second kings 55 second kings 55 uh stephen brother can you read second kings 55 by all means go the king of aram replied i will send a letter to the king of israel so naman left taking with him 10 talents of silver 6000 shekels of gold and 10 sets of clo- of clothing See, he took so much of silver, gold, and recommendation letter, lot of clothes, and went to Israel. See, as usual, if something happens, uh, if there is a recommendation letter, you see, a person which has such a dignity is coming to Israel. You see, he comes directly to the king's palace and goes and shows uh, this letter to uh, you see the king of Israel. Then king of Israel, you see, as soon as he reads this letter. he becomes so fed up and so frustrated you see that he tears his clothes he tears his clothes and tells the king of syria is just seeking some excuse to come and attack israel read first kings fifth chapter 
6 and 7. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read 1 Kings 5th chapter 6 and 7? Second King or First King? Oh, sorry, Second Kings 5th chapter 6 and 7. Good, you are all alert. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you mm -hmm. so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of the Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill a bring? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how is how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. Very good. So he is seeking an excuse to come and quarrel with him. Why? Because those days uh, leprosy was an incurable disease. Nobody could cure leprosy at all. Hence they were uh, isolated from the society. And uh, king tears his clothes. You see, he's seeking some excuse to come and fight about, about Israel. And this news gets uh, spread all over Israel. And this news falls upon the ears of, you see, Elisha, the prophet of God. Then Elisha tells, uh, O king, why are you worried? Send him to me. I will heal him and I will show him that there is a God of Israel here and he will do good. Read verse 8. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read verse 8? 2 Kings 5 8. Okay. And it was so that when Eliza, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore has uh, thou rent the clothes? Let him come now to me, and shall, he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. You see, and he shall know there is a prophet in Israel. So immediately the king sends uh, Naman to where? Naman to Elisha, so and uh, immediately Naman comes and stands at the door of Elisha. But Elisha would never come out. Immediately he sends his servants and tells him and gives him an advice saying to go and dip in river Jordan seven times and be clean. Read verse 10. Read verse uh, 10. Uh, Sahaja Budar, can you read verse 10? Elisha sent a messenger to say mm. to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be clean. You will be clean. Flesh will be restored. As soon as uh, servants come and tell these words, Naaman gets very angry. What is this? I come from so far to meet this person, that he would heal me. But here if I come, they are insulting me. Nobody is welcoming me. You see, they are sending me from place to place. And Naaman feels very bad. And immediately he takes his chariots and goes away. You see, on the way to his uh, place, uh, Syria. But uh, as he was going, so many thoughts uh, used to come in his mind. Why king uh, tore his clothes? Why the prophet is not in king's palace? And uh, after... Uh, uh, so many, you see, a time gap. Then only there uh, was a request uh, coming from Elisha to meet Elisha. And why nobody welcomed, uh, you see, me in the house of Elisha? He expected at least a red carpet welcome. You see, but nothing happened. Not even Elisha would come and see him or, uh, you see, speak to him. Neither come and touch him, but immediately a servant opens the door and tells, go and dip in... Uh, Jordan seven times. Uh, am I so unclean that I should take a bath? Haven't I taken a bath? Without any bath have I come to Israel? So all these thoughts, uh, you see, began to disturb uh, Naman. And uh, his uh, fellow soldiers, they could clearly see this frustration uh, in Naman's face. So as when they were going, you see, their soldiers took an opportunity 
and spoke very kindly to Naman, saying, Master, if the prophet would have told you to do any big thing, a great thing, you would have done it, no? If you have told her to sacrifice 10 rams, 10 bullock, or 10 goats, and give him a lot of gold and silver, a lot of field, house, everything, you would have done it. But see the prophet's simplicity. He has never told anything. He has told a very simple thing. Go and dip in Jordan seven times. So why don't you try it and see? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, we don't lose anything. Let us go back to Syria. So why don't we test this one? You see, read verse 13. Verse uh, 13. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read verse 13? Okay, verse 13. Now one sermon went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then? When he tells you, wash and be cleansed. See? So, if you have told a great thing, you would have done no. Why don't you do a simple thing? So, on the way, actually, while going uh, from uh, Israel to, uh, you see, Syria, they had actually to cross uh, Jordan. So, they were supposed to cross Jordan. So, Naman thought, let me try it and see. So, he came near Jordan. And you see, and what happened? Uh, he dipped and he was clean. Read verse 14. Abhishek brother, can you read verse 14? Okay. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He came out like a little child, and he was clean. His flesh was like a little child. He was so clean. Imagine so disturbed Naman was, but after dipping, what happened? After coming out of Jordan, he was so happy. You see, so how many times did Naman dip? You see, seven times. Imagine, first time Naman dipped, what happened? Nothing happened. Second time, nothing happened. Third time, not even 10% changes. No reduction in approach at all. You see, fourth time, nothing happened. Imagine if we would have been in that place, I have four times, 50% is over. So nothing is going to happen in future. Come on, let us go. You see. Imagine if a doctor gives us a medicine for cold or fever. Huh? If it doesn't go for one or two days, it doesn't reduce. We will go and complain to the doctor. Doctor, what have we done? What medicines are given? Nothing is working to me. Please give me medicine. <laughs> doctor say, <laughs> you need to wait patients for five days. There's a minimum period for um, this, sir. Uh, you see, to work. Uh, similarly, now on four depicts, nothing happened. Uh, soldiers were wondering, Yo, nothing happened. What? Uh, fifth time... Nothing happened. At least they thought, at least it's the sixth time, something will happen. So Naman did the sixth time and came out. Still nothing happened. Imagine, dear brother, and six times at least no little bit changes me. Surely, if we would have been in the place, we would have walked out. But Naman was a general, a man of commitment. You see, a man of valor, warrior. He would never change his mind. So he thought, let me try the last time. Last time he dipped and came. He was totally cleansed, dear brother. He came out uh, with a new flesh, fresher than a child. You see, dear brother, he was so happy. You see, all the soldiers would have got surprised. Oh, really? It worked out. Uh, as the man of God said, what Naman would have done? You see, immediately he came. Uh, running to the house of Elisha and bowed to him, you see, and sent her to him and said, I will from today worship only this God of Israel and offer so many gifts, you see, but all he had bought to Elisha, but Elisha would not take any of those things. He returned everything, you see, and uh, Naaman came home happy. Imagine what Naman would have done as soon as he came to his house. You see, he would have greeted, you see, he would have thanked that little maid for helping him to go to Israel and seek the God of Israel. He would have really thanked and he would have felt so guilty that uh, he brought the child. But uh, immediately 
I'm sure that Naman would have released her child and give him her a safe way back home. You see, deep then, so Naman, seven dippings. You see, so what lesson we have in these seven dippings of Naman? Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five or six, but seven dippings of Naman. What lesson do we have? You see, Leprosy, we all know it was a contagious disease, incurable disease. It would completely deform a man. Similarly, in the Bible, leprosy is compared to sin. Sin is a contagious disease. Once it is affected, it's no cure at all. Nobody can cure this uh, sin until Jesus came and died on the cross. There was no cure at all. Those people who have this sin, they are never allowed in the society. They are not they don't have fellowship with God. They are isolated, desolated, separated from God. You see, and what happens when the sin comes? Sin deforms the body. Man was created in the image of God. He lost the glory. You see, he got he lost that image of God and fell into sin. Apostle Paul says, No, we're all fallen short of the grace of God. You see, we are all fallen short. Of and uh, you see, sometimes uh, the leprosy is so stubborn, even if you pierce it with a, you see, sharp needle or, or, or uh, oil or water, nothing happens. Similarly, sometimes so many people are so much uh, addicted to sin that nothing works for them. No chastisement, no warning, no corrections, nothing. It is like just pouring hot water upon a bullet, you see, upon a buffalo. Nothing works to them at all. That is the condition of sin, dear Budran. You see, Adam was created perfect uh, in the sight of God. God had given Adam everything. You see, he told, uh, you see, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. You see, over all the creeping things, uh, everything was given to Adam. Adam was made the king of this earth. Uh, but God told, you are forbidden to eat the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat every tree, every foot of the tree. You see, but knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. In the day you eat thereof, what will happen? You will surely die. Satan, our cunning foe, you see, he somehow got uh, Eve deceived to eat the forbidden fruit by using the serpent. And uh, you see, dear brethren, and thus sin and sin and its result, death, enter into the world and the whole mankind are condemned to death. So, if we need the mankind of each and every brother, you see, man has to be restored back from the sinful condition, be perfect, again, having a new flesh like God's children, you see, they need to take this seven dipping. What does seven mean in the Bible? The number Seven actually means complete. Therefore, if you see, the number seven appears more than 400 times in the Bible. You see, seven days in a week. You see, seven colors in the rainbow. Seven churches in the book of Revelation. In the candlestick, we add seven lamps. You see, seven angels, seven trumpets. You see, seven veils, seven plagues. So, seven, you see, appears more than 40 times. It signifies a complete number, dear brethren. So, Therefore, this seven, <clears throat> you see, means the complete. It means what? Completely a man has to be immersed to seven times uh, in baptism. Uh. No, some people misunderstand and take baptism seven times. No, no, no. You see, baptism has to be taken properly, correctly. How many times? One time. Okay. But he, we will see that one subject in the uh, coming days. What is the real meaning of baptism and uh, how many times I managed to take and which is the current baptism. So, the, se the seven dippings represents the seven steps a Christian has to take to quit from sin and again restore back to God. The first thing is faith. The first dipping is faith. Then, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Bible says, no, Hebrews, uh, you see, 11th 11 chapter, without faith, it is impossible to please God at all. So, whoever comes to God must have faith on God that God cleanses us from all sins. You see, therefore, in Hebrews 11th chapter, if you see, 
that is the faith chapter where uh, each and every old testament uh, you see uh, people have mentioned the faithful warriors because of the faith they were actually blessed so similarly whoever comes to god they should have this first step and that is the faith in god and uh, if we need to if we confess our sins to god and god is faithful that he would forgive all our sins okay dear brethren so let us read a few verses uh, hebrews 11:6 Abhishek Badar, can you read Hebrews 11, 6? Yes. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, people have to seek God. Faithfully, they have to search God. First John 1 John 1.9 uh, Vivek Badar, can you read First John 1 John 1.9 Okay. Emmanuel Badar, can you read First John 1 John 1.9? Yeah, First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Very good, brother. See, God is faithful to cleanse us from all sins and purify from all unrighteousness. This is the first step. So, the next, the second step is the step of the Bible. So, as a man, you see, comes to comes to God through faith. The next step is, you see, a huh, Bible. That means. As uh, he, you see, uh, has faith, uh, he tries to increase his faith. And how does he increase his faith? It is by hearing, hearing the word of God. You see, that means he shows uh, interest in uh, reading uh, more about the Bible. He shows interest uh, in knowing more about the master. You see, he loves the master. And he wants to know more about the master and attends, uh, you see, the Bible studies uh, and uh, takes and reads the Bible. Anything related to the Bible, uh, you see, he understands it. Any questions is uh, as uh, you see, he clarifies it. Uh, that is the second step. Uh, the second step is increase in knowledge. The zeal, you see, the love upon God's words. You see, whenever he wants to purchase a Bible, you see, he spends and takes the Bible and dedicates it. Uh, you see, Bible becomes his favorite book. Uh, he makes notes of each and every class, you see, and tries to understand it more and more, you see. So, the study of the Bible is important. Therefore, in the Bible, it says that uh, God desires uh, knowledge and everything. Hosea 6.6. 6. Hosea 6.6. 6. Uh, Peter Buddha, can you read Hosea 6.6? 6. Okay. <clears throat> For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offer offerings. See, God desires mercy and not sacrifice and knowledge of God than burnt offerings. So this knowledge of God is very, very important. You see, when Jesus came to this earth, how did he, you see, get this knowledge? It is only by God's grace. Therefore, when we read about child Jesus, he says that he grew in knowledge and grace. Uh, you see, therefore, we need to have this knowledge. See, understanding Bible is very important. Uh, we just can't please God whichever way we want. We should be pleasing to God whichever way he wants us to please. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, this is the second step. Uh, and the third step, you see, is the thing which is connected to the first and the second step. So, as a person understands and knows and studies more and more about the Bible, what happens? Uh, God's word centers him. And it uh, is like a mirror which reflects him so many, you see, faults in him, so many mistakes, uh, you see, which he actually commits. Uh, you see, the brain, all the worldly things, uh, the sin within him and he tries to quit that sin. This is the third step. Remember the tabernacle class? As soon as we enter into the court, 
we have a labor very vast and so that is the condition so he tries to fit himself cleanse himself outward sins you see the lot of sinful things in the world the world is filled with sin seeing mobile you see internet facebook twitter so many things are there if you keep on seeing you can keep on seeing continuously for days together you see then uh, entertainment uh, attending bash parties uh, drink smoking watching matches uh, continuously go for shopping malls uh, you see uh, addicted to the tv you see there are many more things satan deceives god god's children today and uh, just totally immersed them into sin so as we read the bible quitting of this sin is the third and uh, important step you see like uh, a christian who is in the first step he would not know much about uh, god and bible he would think that uh, telling lies is a good thing nothing wrong in telling lies but as uh, he understands more and more of the bible and as he becomes closer and closer to christ uh, he realizes telling lies is against god so he tries to leave them you see and cleanses in outward things outward visible sinful activities uh, this is the third step okay let us read second timothy 219 second timothy 219 uh sai ji brother can you read second timothy 219 nevertheless god the solid foundation stands firm seal with it seal with it in scripture and the lord now those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the lord must turn away from we get it oh sorry it got muted uh so dear brethren uh, the bible says everybody who names uh, the name of god they should depart from uh, iniquity you see let it be anything uh, you see whichever thing uh, which god doesn't like uh, it is our responsibility to depart from it at your end you see the small step of faith putting into action you see that is quitting sin you see so this sinful things has to be quit that's a third uh, you see step okay now what is the fourth one the fourth one you see is very very important uh, it is from this place that jesus actually began his race what is that one that is baptism that is immersion ourself into christ that is offering our bodies as a living sacrifice to god and become a follower of christ so all these days who would be a believer a believer who who is a believer if you see a believer is a person who tries to cleanse himself of outward sins but who is a follower we need to become a follower of christ you see and how do we become a follower of christ it is not only by quitting sin you see it is taking a step ahead you see a leap in faith and offer our bodies as living sacrifice and become followers of christ okay romans 12:1 stephen mother can you read romans 12:1 Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your true and proper worship okay offer your bodies as a living sacrifice as we are living we need to live a sacrificial life which is dedicated to the lord this is a reasonable service sir you see what did jesus say we have studied about a church class previous week now you see the difference between a believer and a follower believer believes christ only for uh, blessings miracles benefits uh. but who is a follower of christ that one who denies himself carries the cross and follows him that is the time that a person becomes a new creature you see that is the time that god anoints him with the holy spirit not just god gives the holy spirit before the man so as soon as a person is properly immersed you see god gives him the holy spirit that is the thing 
that is the stage that is the point from which the race actually begins he enters into the narrow way you see and starts to run the race okay now after the fourth one is the fifth one now what is the fifth one you see everything are interrelated the fifth one is much related to the fourth one and the third one you know third one he actually tried to cleanse the outward sin but after consecration in the fifth step he practically analyzes himself and walks in the footsteps of jesus follows the footsteps of jesus practically not theoretically before this one he was theoretically understanding everything but now he begins to walk therefore what did apostle john say you also walk as jesus walked that means you should walk your talk you see and read galatians 220 galatians 220 abhishek brother can you read galatians 220 <clears throat> I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live at not I, but Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. See, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Just imagine Christ living in me means His life was like Christ. Dear brethren, therefore. Apostle Paul put all his efforts so that each and every children of God may develop into Christ. Galatians four nineteen. Ah, uh, Vivek brother, can you read Galatians four nineteen? Vivek Shankar brother, you are there. Okay, Emmanuel brother, can you read Galatians four nineteen? Galatians four nineteen, my dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. You see, I am in pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. You see, until Christ is formed in you, Apostle Paul put lot of efforts up because it was not so easy to develop into Christ likeness. So practically, dear brethren, so what all he wanted to do but he could not do, he does it. in this fifth step you see the bible uh, gives uh, a example and difference between a righteous person and a you see good person read romans fifth chapter uh, romans fifth chapter uh raj brother do you have the bible can you read Raj brother, brother, I didn't carry my Bible with that. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, uh, Ganesh brother, can you read Romans fifth chapter, seventh verse? Romans five seven. Seven, five seven. Yeah. Okay. I've seven. Okay. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some one would even dare to die. Okay. So. Sajid brother, can you read a little bit louder from your Bible? Verily, verily, will anyone die for a righteous person? Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. See, here it shows the difference between a good person and a righteous person. It says somebody might die for a righteous person, but for a good person, probably some might die. Now, what is the meaning of this one? A righteous person is a law-abiding person to abide by the law strictly. Very strict. What about the rule says? You follow the rule, okay? But good man, he goes beyond the rules and does good. Imagine if they are given loan for a person, the righteous person and the good person. What would the both do? The righteous person would uh, go and ask for the money after the due date, and he would ask for the money and he has to repay it. But if the you see the person who has taken loan, he requests, sir, I am not able to pay. Please give me one more time. 
You see, the right of person as very strict. No, you agree for it, you have to give, or else I will take you to the law. That is the righteous person. There is nothing wrong. He is following the rules. But what is a good person? Does a good person asking a request, he would consider it and tell, okay, no problem. You can pay it and take some time. That is a difference between a good person and a righteous person. He says, somebody might die. Nobody would come so easily to die for a, righteous, for a good person. For a righteous person, it seems. But for a good person, some might think, but uh, Christ died for us when? When we were sinners, dear brethren. Therefore, we need to be good Christians, not just righteous Christians, just only following the word, follow the spirit of it, practically apply in the life. That is the fifth step. Okay. Now, sixth step is a very, very important step before the last step. And that one is love. After doing all these things, dear brethren, we need to develop in love. If you don't develop in love, all the first steps are waste. You see, so the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the first fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. You see, so love is the fulfillment of the law. That's what the Bible says. Sir. Read hmm, Galatians 5.22. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, can you read Galatians 5.22? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Very good. The first fruit is joy. You see, read Romans 13, 10 also. Brother. Romans 13, 10. Love does no harm to your neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. You see, in this love, there are actually three types. One is a filial love, that is affectionate love, where mother has upon the child, oh, my child. Your last love is a, you see, bodily, physical love, which a husband has upon wife. You see, but the third and a very important uh, selfless, unselfish love is an ape love. That is the love which God has upon us. His love is not selfish. It is unselfish love. Regardless of your good or bad, God loves us. So, regarding this agape love, it is given to us in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter 1 to 8. Now, let us read this one uh, and see. You see, uh, Stephen brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 13 chapter verses 1 to 8? One by one, we will see. Stephen, brother, are you there? Yes, brother. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. You see, one might speak uh, different, different languages, multiple languages, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 languages, all the 22 languages you can speak. <laughs> but... Uh, whether it is not of love, it is of no use at all. That means you should, you have the talent to speak in different tongues. Yes, you use it. That's the Lord's gift. But what is the spirit? What is the motive? What is the intention of it? Are you doing it for pride, ego, selfishness? Then it is of no use. It should be out of love, unselfish love. Continue with the next. Huh? If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries of all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. You see, faith to move mountains, decode all the prophecies. You see, explain everything. You see, some people misunderstand this one and say, Brother, so love is important. No need to understand anything from the Bible. Very secret, deep things. No need to understand, Brother. No, no, no. Bible doesn't say that you should not understand that. The wisdom of God is Jesus Christ. As and as you know more and more of God's word, that helps you to develop love. You see, love is the fulfillment of the law. How do you gain that love? It is hearing, hearing the word of God. 
You see, he'll say, you see, I have faith to move the mountains. How much faith you need to move the mountains? Only a small mustard seed. That is, that means even if I have small faith, but that is not accompanied with love, it is of no use. Then, brother, next to you. If I give all I possess to the poor and give my own and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You see, though I give all my money to the poor, you see, the Christians do know Christmas season, they all spend, spend, give it to the poor, help the poor, build a home for the age, you see, help the desolate orphanages, you see. Hospitals, sick, uh, help the poor, uh, schools, uh, all this they build, no? Good. Uh, but if there is no love, it is of no use, dear brother. We may offer our bodies uh, to burn. If somebody comes and kills us, uh, we may die like a martyr. But if we don't have love, it is of no use, dear brother. We should be accompanied by love. Why we are dying for Christ? Is the spirit because of love on God, love upon Christ? That is very, very important. You see. Next, continue, Buddha. Huh? It does not dishonor others. I'm sorry. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Ah, it is not proud. One by one, we'll see this. I'll uh, see characters and go. Uh, love, suffer long, patience. You see? Uh, you know, Socrates, the Greek philosopher was there. Socrates is a very, very calm, very patient person. You see? But he is, uh, he used to have a wife who is very terrible. One day, you see, Socrates was reading, uh, you see, the Bible. You see? The wife uh, called him, called him, called him. It was like just a uh, you see, like deaf ears, he neither reacted nothing. Then his wife got so fed up that she brought a bucket of water and poured upon Socrates. It's completely drained in water. He simply replied, till now it was uh, thundering, but now it began to rain. It's patience. How do we show <laughs> patience? How do we react? In a, you see, a strange situation. Then, you see, charity envieth not. You see, it is not, uh, you see, jealous uh, about others. Envy, you see, envy is what? Uh, if something good happens to our neighbor, uh, something will happen in your stomach, no? You see, that is called what? Uh, you see, envy, envy, jealousy. You see, they were two neighbor systems. You see, either people, people very deadly enemy, you see, very jealous about uh, each other. There was always competition between each other. You see. So, when they got uh, appeared to both of them, you see, and asked, okay, now tell me what do you want? I'll give you one gift. But whatever uh, gift I give you, I'll give the double to your neighbor. You so, this uh, person thought, okay, uh, God, you come tomorrow, I'll tell you. Then God told, okay, tomorrow I'll come. The entire night he did not sleep and thought, 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 what to do, what to do? Whatever I ask, God will give two to him. No? If I ask two bungalow, he will get two bungalow. If I have two, two kg gold, he will get four kg gold. Whatever I ask, he will get do no. And then he thought and thought, thought and thought. And ultimately, when God came in the morning, he told, Lord, you told him whatever you give, you will give double to him. Please pluck out. One of my eyes, he told him. That means what? If you pluck one of my eyes, his two eyes will should go. That is what envy. You see, not feeling good about blessing others. You see, that is not love. Then, charity doesn't want itself. Is not puffed up. Always keeping about self. I did this one, I did that one, I am like this, I am like that, I am like that. No, 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 no. You should not boast about yourself. Somebody else should tell good about yourself. Not ourself. It is not puffed up. You see, always never think on top of the world. 
not having ego or pride. You see, be humble on the ground, dear brother. And Jesus was the king of kings, master of masters. But when Jesus came to this earth, how did he move with his disciples? Nobody carried his left suitcase, right suitcase, and Jesus was walking like a hero, and here and there all the disciples came. No, no, like Rajinikanth, Amitabh Bachchan, or Philam, no, nothing. Jesus was a simple person. He was one among them. You see, very simple. Simplicity. You see, it doesn't puff up. Then, brother, continue, brother, Stephen, brother, huh? It does not honor, dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Ah, it does not behave itself unseemingly. It does not misbehave. If you go to some brother's house, oh, just because he's a brother, you don't go to his entire rooms and all, check all his books and everything. Oh, brother, you're my brother. I love you. I love you so much that I die for you and do whatever things, sir. No, it doesn't behave itself unseemingly. There is liberty in Christ, but there is also a discipline, a love, respect and honor. We don't do the same thing for parents. Do we do it? You see? Then, what does it say? You see, uh, seeketh not our own. It is not always, uh, you see, thinking about uh, how to put his plan forward. You see, like Balaam. Even though he knew that it's not God's will, he was so pushed to curse Israel. He gave money, tempted, what all he wanted, he did. But ultimately, God's will was done. Always, never seek to put yourself forward. You see, not yourself, always, I, 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 I. No, 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 stop. Not I, I, I. We, 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 we should come. Who is the one who told I? The devil, the Satan. Therefore, God cast him out. Jesus never used the word I. You see? He never used the why. He only said, I am. Uh, before uh, Abraham was, he said that. You see, that's it. Uh, huh? He said, I am the way. That's all. Uh, but he never used selfishly those terms uh, for himself, uh, dear brethren. You see, whenever he used we, us, uh, the term he used. Uh, he never left the disciples. You see, he took everybody being together in unity is very, very important. Uh, it is not selfish. Uh, it is not easily provoked. Easily provoked means not short temper. You see, having a long temper. And think it no evil. You see, in your Bible is given nicely. Not, keep no record of evil. People, you know, they keep record of evil. They'll tell, ah, you did like this thing to me, no, so many days before. Now is my opportunity, I'll take revenge. It, kept, it keeps no record of evil. You see, dear brethren. God doesn't keep record of our evil. If he keeps record of our evil, we can't even stand before God. So much of sin we do. We should be merciful. We should be kind to the brethren. Not keep record of evil, dear brethren. You see, never think evil. Whenever evil thought comes, overcome it. You see, therefore, this is love. Then, brother, next brother, huh? Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Ah. It always protects. Ah. Read, read, read. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Ah. Love, love never fails. fails. Thank you. So, love doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. What does it mean? It rejoices in the truth which is written in the Bible. Just because my pastor said, my pastor used to believe those things, not blindly believing it, though it is not there in the Bible. What does the Bible say? Huh? Ladies, women should not preach in the church. Brother, I went to one church. I was going there. My brother's wife was preaching there. No problem, brother. Even though it is given in the Bible, it is outdated. I will still believe him. I will still love him. That's what the Bible says. Huh? What does the Bible say? It does not rejoice in iniquity. They are doing wrong means you are not supposed to rejoice and get attached and have fellowship with them. It rejoices in the truth. What did Jesus do? 
the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, did they do some any very great gross sin? But there is some simple sins. What simple sin? Uh? You see, standing in the corners, uh, so they pray that everybody is a seat. Very small mistake, God. Uh. Why did not Jesus overlook it? Uh? They always sought uh, a good place uh, before everybody. You see, everybody does it, but Jesus could have forgiven that one. No, why did Jesus mention that one? That is all gross sin in God's sight. Uh. That is not rejoicing in the truth. That is rejoicing in iniquity. Their intentions were wrong, dear brethren. Therefore, rejoicing in truth is very, very important. Uh, you see, many people believe that uh, uh, now is the mankind's last chance. If they don't believe in Jesus, they will go to hellfire. Uh, what does the Bible say? Thousand year reign of Christ is there. Jesus is going to return the second coming. His kingdom is going to establish on this earth. All the dead are going to come back to life. That's what the Bible says. But believing things which are against the Bible is not rejoicing in the truth. That is rejoicing in iniquity. Therefore, this truth, if you have love, it believes the truth. You see, it bears the truth. It hopes in the truth. It endures the truth. Though it is opposed by everybody. And as it says, Love never fails. Dear brethren, this love, you see, will never fail. Dear brethren, this love, actually, there was, uh, there was only one man who had these qualities of love. You know, who is that one man? That one man is our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let us read the same verse again in a different way. Okay? Now, let us read from verse uh, 3. 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. Verse 3. Uh, uh, Emmanuel brother, read this verse by putting the word Jesus instead of love. Read from verse 4 uh, to verse 7. If Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Jesus never fails. How Jesus happily never. suits Jesus now. Very wonderful. As we are reading, we can feel that revive in our body. Now, let us apply this verse to us and read it. You see, instead of uh, love, you read with the word I, brother. Imagine, brother, please read with uh, replacing it with word I. Okay. Uh, I am patient. I am kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It gives no record of wrongs. I does not delight in evil, but rejoice in the, with the truth. I, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. I never fails. Yes, I never fail. You will definitely fail. Isn't it? Dear brethren, when we need to attain that love. That is the last step. Then once we are perfect in love of Christ, that is the end of the sixth dipping. The next dipping you come out with a new body. That is, once we are perfect in love, level up a love, so we love our, even our enemies, God would resurrect us and give us a new body in the resurrection. Dear brethren, how will the body be? A spiritual body for the heavenly salvation. That body will be not like this fleshly body. It will be new like Jesus Christ. We will see him as we see him. You see, so therefore, Jesus said, Be thou faithful unto that, I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation 2.10. Abhishek Buddha, please read Revelation 2.10. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be... that. He may be tried and he shall have tribulation tended, but you faithful unto be faithful 
unto death, and I will give you the crown of eternal life. See, be though faithful unto death. Until death, we need to be faithful to people. Then only God will give us the crown of life. But you see, seven dippings. And uh, Naman comes in the resurrection. We can thank him. Because seven dippings, we learned so many lessons. Uh, you see, though it was not uh, application for Naman, <laughs> it is really got application for us. Uh, but we may understand and develop into Christ likeness. Dear brethren, so let us all put our efforts to be like Christ. Uh, you see, and... Uh, Develop one by one. Faith, the truth, the separation from sin, consecration, you see, and practically walking and love and ultimately be faithful to God in our death, dear brethren. So, may God help us to overcome all our uh, infirmities and uh, weaknesses. And one more important thing, you see, coming week, from coming week, there will be classes on Saturday only. And uh, I request everybody to please get KJV version of the Bible. King James version of the Bible. If uh, somebody wants to uh, get it, please get it. If you can get it, it's very uh, good. Or else, uh, those who are in Nepal, if they are uh, able to get it, it's very good. Or else, you can contact with Ashish. She will help you to procure that one. Or else, uh, we will see how we can arrange a KJV. Because uh, I request everybody to use the KJV because the translation is very, very apt and very useful for the coming classes. So, next week is a very important class. So I request nobody to miss. Correctly join before 8 o'clock. It's a very, very important class. We'll take the class. So please bring the KGV Bible along with you. And anybody, friends and relatives who are interested for such a Bible study, you can invite them. So anybody, any questions, any doubts?